Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual college visit series. Uh, this is our first virtual visit of the year. We are really excited to have you here. We're very excited to have uh, Jennifer Brammer with High Point University here with us. And she's going to share all the great things about High Point so we can learn and listen. Um, and then, of course, if you have any questions, you can always put them in the chat or ask throughout today's session as well. So with that, Ms. Brammer, I'm going to hand it over to you to get us started. All right. Thank you so much. So again, my name is Jennifer, and I have the pleasure of working with students in Virginia. I'm also a proud HPU alum. So if you guys have any follow-up questions, again, I'm more than happy to answer for you. I brought a little bit of high point with me that's behind my screen as well as right here that is uh, Roberts Hall that you see in the picture that is our first building on campus when it was founded in 1924. So I'm going to go over a little bit of an overview about High Point University and if you guys have any follow-up questions or if there are any questions as I'm going along please don't hesitate to let me know. So I'm gonna start off with our mission statement. At High Point University, every student receives an extraordinary education in an inspiring environment with caring people. So I'm gonna talk about what that means and how we want to integrate that into the experience that you can have at High Point University as a student. So we try to formulate that into our four pillars of academic success. So first we have academic excellence, experiential learning in every major, four-year development of life skills, and modeling values in character development. So I'm going to go to, into each of these and how they also coordinate with our mission statement and how you can see these values play out in campus as well as your experience at HPO. So in terms of academic excellence, here are our top 10 freshman majors. I'm sure, sure you'll see there that undeclared is actually our number one major. It is completely normal if you have no idea what you'd like to do for a career uh, when you are a freshman or your senior year of high school. You don't even have to declare your major until the end of your sophomore year. Uh, and then you can also see some more popular majors that we have at High Point, but we like to say that academic excellence is the bare minimum. So any school that you tour should be able to say that you're going to receive an excellent education. Uh, but we like to go above and beyond a degree that you can hang on your wall at your future office or your future home, and we want to equip you with skills and an education that's going to serve you far more than your four years at High Point University. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, undeclared is our most popular major. So uh, we do offer a program called Project Discovery, which is where a student will receive specific advising if they are an undeclared major to help them decide what they like and what they don't like. Uh, maybe if it's personality tests or assessments that we can do with you or suggesting some introductory courses uh, to different majors that maybe could also fulfill a general education requirement. So you can kind of build on your strengths while also finding out maybe what isn't the best fit for you. So you have that clarity before, again, you have to declare your major at the end of your sophomore year. So you have plenty of time to figure that out instead of just choosing something because that's what you thought of at first or because you feel that pressure to declare a major. We, we don't want you to feel any pressure. Um, also, you will receive a student success coach at orientation. Uh, that's before you even start your freshman year. The role of your success coach is to be your liaison to High Point University and to your academic as well as social success. They're going to be like your first best friend in college, and they are going to be able to maybe give you advice as to what uh, major and minor to pair together, if that's something you're interested in or giving you an overview of what your next four years could look like if you choose to double major. If, for example, you're not doing well in a course, your success coach is gonna reach out to you and they are going to 
first off, make sure that everything's okay and there's not a deeper reason as to why you're not showing up to class or maybe why you're not doing well. And then they're gonna set up a game plan with you and uh, work on how you can be successful in that course. So maybe it's going to our complimentary tutoring services, your professor's office hours, whatever that might look like. Uh, and your courses are going to be completely planned before you arrive on campus. So you're gonna receive your class schedule as well at orientation based on a course proposal that you'll fill out about your class time preferences and what types of classes you would like to take your freshman year. So it's a very peaceful process, not having to plan classes right when you get to college, your success coach will do that for you. We do have Save the Art academic facilities. So at HPU, we want to prepare you for the world as it's going to be inside and outside of the classroom. So we want to mimic an environment that you could find yourself in, whether that's going to be like your future graduate school, your future career. Uh, so we do have in this picture that you see our Colt Planetarium uh, that is primarily utilized in our astronomy courses or some science lecture components. Uh, sometimes we'll also open it up to the community and play movie showings, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have many learning labs like news and radio studios. We also have mock sale rooms and we do have a boardroom that also serves as a classroom, just to name a couple. So our classes are taught by professors that either have extensive experience in their field or advanced degrees. You're not gonna have a class that's taught by a teacher's assistant or by a graduate student, for instance. Our average class size is 17 students with a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. So you receive personalized and individualized attention and classes are gonna be more of a conversation and discussion based rather than sitting in a classroom and having someone talk at you uh, while you're you know, staring at a wall or something. So 25% of any given course is going to contain some form of experiential learning to it. So I hate this example, but it is a good one that I can think of that students might be able to relate to maybe when you've taken a science course and you've had to dissect an animal, uh, the material that you were learning about probably stuck a lot better with you when you were dissecting the animal instead of having your teacher talk to you about dissecting the animal. When you were actually doing it, you were able to connect the dots and have that hands-on experience. So that's why a quarter of every course is going to have some form of hands-on learning to it so that you can, again, apply what you're learning in the classroom in a real-life setting or maybe even get out out of a classroom and get into one of those learning labs that I was talking about. So for instance, in this picture that you see, that's one of our new studios on campus. And our students that, taking, that are taking the video journalism class that we offer, uh, they produce live newscasts that air on YouTube every week. And that's for a lab component to that course. So a common misconception is that you have to be a science major to have a lab component to your course, but no, you can be a journalism major and your lab can be creating and airing a live newscast. So uh, some pretty cool opportunities to get out of the classroom at HPU. Also a common misconception is that you have to be in the sciences to do research. It's not true at all at High Point. You can first off start research as soon as your freshman year. Some students will stay for a summer and work with a professor on research. You could be a game design major, for example. Uh, I know one of my professors that I had did research on video games with zoo animals. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool to learn about. So definitely don't think that you're limited when it comes to research, if that's something that you're interested in. We also have a four-year internship guarantee program. So you could very well graduate having four or more internships under your belt. 
Uh, we do have a career and professional development center that it serves as a resource for you to uh, succeed in your potential career path or uh, make sure that you are equipped with all of the professional skills to succeed when it comes time for internship applications, job applications, graduate school applications, or interviews. So I'll talk a little bit more about our career and professional development center here in just a second. So you might notice some of these faces here. They might be a little familiar to some of you, but we have uh, faculty members in residence that come to campus at least once a semester to work with students. So we do have Steve Wozniak as our innovator in residence. He is the co-founder of Apple and he works with students on projects such as an autonomous golf cart. That was something they have been working on over the past couple of years. We have Mark Randolph. He's the co-founder of Netflix and he works with students on their elevator pitches, for example, how you stand out from the next candidate that is vying for the same job that you might be applying for. We have Sent Marshall, she's the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks, and some students actually went to Dallas with Sent Marshall to shadow her and to make connections within the Dallas Mavericks network. Um, so those are some pretty cool opportunities with our innovators and our faculty members and residents that few students have. So I mentioned in our four pillars earlier, modeling values and character development. And I know you might be thinking, well, values and character, that's hard to teach at a college. So we, we don't teach you uh, values or, um, you know, we don't have courses on how to develop your character. So we model that for students. Um, so one of my favorite examples is if you visit campus, you'll see these kiosks throughout our international promenade. That's where all of our academic buildings are. So where your classes will be. Uh, those kiosks will have staff members there in the morning and they will give you a granola bar, a water bottle, some Uncrustables. In the wintertime, they'll hand out hot chocolate. If you're on your way to class and maybe you forgot to eat breakfast or you want a warm cup of hot cocoa. And the reason why we have those kiosks throughout campus is we want to model generosity. So uh, that's one of the ways we like to model our values. Another thing is that there's not a piece of trash that you'll see on campus. Our campus is very well maintained and that's because Dr. Cobain always says to leave a place better than when you found it. And I feel that's really reflected on our campus because this is our home as staff, faculty and students and we take such pride in it. So that is reflected in the cleanliness and the, um, and just the overall inspirational environment that you'll see on High Point University's campus. Our students also are committed to uh, service. So there are no community service requirements of High Point University, uh, but our students will typically do this on their own willingness. So uh, over the past couple of years, students have completed over 100,000 hours of community service which is really refreshing to see, especially some of these uh, videos and uh, photos from these events where the students are giving back. It's, it's truly touching. Uh, so in this picture, you'll see students signing the honor code. That is a tradition freshman year where you will sign with your classmates the honor code and these are displayed throughout various buildings on campus, but that's just to hold each other accountable. So in the honor code, it'll go over, you know, no cheating, no plagiarism. So that's also a cool tradition that we have to enforce our values at High Point. So finally, four-year development of life skills. This one is really one of the aspects that makes High Point University so unique. You'll probably see under our logo and in some of our branding that we're known as the Premier Life Skills University. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so our president, Dr. Nito Cobain, 
he actually is a graduate from High Point College back when that was what it was referred to. And he actually immigrated from Lebanon with just $50 in his pocket and knew very limited English. Well, at High Point College, he worked very hard and he became very successful. He's now written many books. He's one of the most sought after public speakers and he has all these podcasts out. He's on a television show and he is just wonderful to hear speak. So I definitely encourage you guys to see if you can find any clips or to attend an open house where Dr. Corbain will, uh, will be speaking during the beginning of the event. But Dr. Cobain had this vision that life skills should be integrated in a college education instead of these students that are learning life skills maybe later on in life, far after they graduate and kind of when they're in that trial and error period. If you're in your first job, you are learning life skills as you go. But Dr. Cobain said, no, we should be integrating that into a college education so students will be prepared and equipped and confident for the situations and environments that they might be encountering in the future. So to achieve this, we have, uh, or Dr. Cobain teaches a president seminar to first year freshmen their first semester, and that's called president seminar. So he's going to go over how to manage your time, how to manage your finances, how to manage your energy, which are all super important skills to have in college, let alone life after college as well. We also have some fun learning labs on campus, such as two five-star restaurants. So the purpose of having five-star restaurants on campus is meetings or interviews might take place over a meal nowadays, especially in a fine dining location. And we don't want you to feel intimidated by that. We want you to feel confident and comfortable in that environment. So that is included in the meal plan and you can dine there up to once a week. You schedule reservations as you would at a uh, real dining location off campus. And our waiters are actually trained in etiquette. So they will you know, not give you the typical common sense etiquette tips, but they'll teach you, for example, that you eat cream spinach like spaghetti, you twirl it on a spoon, uh, what to do with your napkin when you get up to use the restroom. We also have a culture inspired section of the menu that rotates each month, uh, and that will include a different culture each month that's featured. And we also will give students a handout that correlates with that culture on maybe social norms from that country and that culture. So if you were to have a dinner party with someone from a different country, you would know a little bit more about their background and maybe what their cultural norms are. So you would know what may or may not offend them. Uh, and I promise this is tried and true in regards to interviews happening over a uh, fine dining location. So one of my best friends that graduated from High Point University actually started her dream job today and her third round of interview was over a meal at a nice restaurant. So I promise it's true. Uh, going over a little bit of our inspiring environment. So uh, we are ranked among the top 10 most beautiful campuses. High Point is definitely one of the places you have to see to believe. Uh, something that I want to point out in the picture on the bottom left hand side of the screen is some flags throughout our international promenade were represented by 37 countries. So uh, students from 37 different countries are currently students at HPU and we display the flags from where those students come from throughout our promenade. So it's a really cool experience to uh, see your flag presented on the promenade as well as know what types of students are here from all different types of backgrounds so that you can just be more aware. And it's, it's a really humbling experience to have everyone all on one campus. And uh, we're also represented by all 50 states. So we really do have people coming from all over. Uh, in terms of our student body, we're about 5,000 students undergrad. Um, and it, you're really in that sweet spot to where 
you can't walk to class or Starbucks without seeing at least one person you know, but you're also going to have opportunities to be meeting new people constantly. We have 16 Division I sports teams, over 200 clubs and organizations. We also have uh, fraternity and sorority life that's centrally located within Greek Village on campus. About 37% of our students are involved in uh, Greek life. We also have club and intramural sports if there's a sport you like to play, but you're not going to play at the Division I level. Club sports are a great route to take or even intramural. Those can be as fun or as lighthearted as you want them to be. Uh, we also have uh, religious organizations too, and we welcome students of all religions and will also hold services for students of all religions. So uh, again, some key takeaways are four pillars. So academic excellence, uh, experiential learning and every major four-year development of life skills, modeling values and character development. Uh, some things too to keep in mind is we do have a four-year internship guarantee, guaranteed four-year graduation. We also offer a tuition-free master's program in communication and business leadership. So that can be a fifth year that you would be living on campus in order to receive the grant. You start classes actually online the summer after graduation, then take on-campus classes for the remaining two semesters after graduation. So you would be finished with that master's degree the following May after your uh, undergraduate graduation. And again, that is tuition free. Uh, we also have our uh, statistic that we're very proud of due to our uh, professional development opportunities, our life skills opportunities, and uh, just our overall experience that we want students to uh, have at HPU and the things we want them to take away from that. That is 98% of our students are either employed or placed in graduate school within six months of graduation. Uh, so next steps, um, I'm not sure if y'all can see that uh, underneath. Oh no, what just happened? Um, but, um, but if you schedule a campus visit, I definitely recommend that so you can see what I'm talking about and kind of connect the dots. Um, and we also have some virtual information sessions. I'm more than happy to chat with you. Uh, I have some in-person coffee with your counselor sessions. And so we can talk about next steps or the application plan. Uh, open houses, I think are such a great way to see an overview of campus and take a deep dive. You'll also get to hear Dr. Quibane speak. He does some opening remarks. So it's an overall great experience. Uh, and you can always reach out to me if you're interested in arranging any of those and I can get you registered or set something up. Um, I, I knew I had, sorry, I'm struggling a little bit, but uh, this is me and uh, please feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions. I'm more than happy to help throughout this process and uh, give me a follow on Instagram. You'll see some fun updates about HPU and some opportunities of uh, coffee with your counselor that I'm offering. And uh, I'm so excited to share this journey with you and uh, best of luck. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. This has made me super excited about HPU. And now I feel like I'm in the know because I can call it HPU now. I didn't even know that's what you do. So, yeah. but honestly, you guys have so many great things going on there. And we just really appreciate you sharing all this with us, with our students, with our families. And Ms. Brammer, we will absolutely be in touch with you, I'm sure, with questions following today. Absolutely. Please let me know. Do you have any follow-up questions from anything I just shared? Other, the only other thing um, for scholarships and that type of thing, any advice you would give our students or families about that type of thing? in terms of payment and scholarships and grants and those things. Yeah, absolutely. So I know the typical application process uh, isn't really included in the presentation. So I can, again, connect and go over that, take a more deep dive over the application and scholarship process. But actually, students don't have to submit any additional materials or any additional applications to be considered for merit scholarship we're gonna review the student's eligibility among application review. 
So if the student is eligible for merit scholarship and has been admitted, they'll receive an initial base amount in their acceptance. And depending on what category they fall into, if they are a high point scholar, they'll attend an on-campus event and automatically increase that initial amount just by attending the event. If they're a presidential scholar, they'll be invited to Presidential Scholars Weekend, which is where they'll interview with faculty and current students to increase the initial amount they were awarded. So we look at unweighted GPA, we look at course rigor, and we are fully test optional, both for admission and for scholarship consideration. If you do feel test taking is where you shine and you're confident in your SAT or ACT scores, go ahead and submit them. They could uh, increase your scholarship eligibility if it is a um, positive correlation with your GPA. But if you have a strong GPA, but you don't feel like test taking is your thing, that is completely fine. You can go test optional and just apply with your unweighted GPA and still receive the same consideration. You're not gonna be penalized by any means. But if you're not sure whether you should submit test scores or go test optional, you can always send me an email and I'll let you know what would be the best course of action. Okay, wow, thank you for all that information. That was really helpful. Exactly what I needed to know. So, and our, I'm sure our students and families. So, um, well, thank you for your time with us today and we look forward to seeing you in the future. My pleasure, thank you so much for having me. And please, again, let me know if you have any follow-up questions. Okay, we definitely will. Thank you and thank you to everyone for joining us today, Ms. Bramar. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Okay, Bye. have a great day. Thanks, take care. Yeah. Bye-bye.